These are the top five MMOs releasing in 2044. <laughs> First on the list is Blue Protocol, an action-packed high fantasy MMO being developed by Bandai Namco. The game itself has already gone through some controversy, though, in the States and in Japan as well. In the States, you can primarily find people mad either because of the censorship of the cosmetics or because their account got banned after playing on the Japanese server. But the main source of drama in the states came from Amazon Games or lack thereof, as I truly felt Amazon Games was sleeping and purposely trying to withhold information on the game's release. On the other hand, in Japan, the main source of controversy was the emptiness to the game, as many people believed the game was super easy to grind up in, allowing players to rarely, if ever, return to a zone. That being said, the devs have gone through and updated the game immensely, helping with dead zones, allowing for players to have a need to return back to the beginning. The game itself, though, is fairly clean and simple to understand, as in the game you can take on full dungeons, towers, boss fights, farm resources sources and even farm transmog for character customization. Each one of these activities can be done with yourself or with other players. On average, most parties are a maximum of five players while still seeing others in the world. Although while doing raids or world bosses, you'll usually team up with 20 to 30 players to complete them. My personal favorite feature is the amount of class and character customization when it comes to builds, as not only there are different skill trees to go through, but different elements you can get on your weapons as well, making builds allowed to be very unique in the player's own way. Overall, I'd say the game looks very clean, especially if you like the anime art style and super flat combat, make this one of the most unique MMOs that's going to be releasing this year. Next up on the list is Pax Day, an absolutely stunning sandbox MMO being developed by Mainframe Industries. The biggest issue that the game is facing right now is they're planning to add something called Plex, which is essentially like a WoW token. So you're going to be able to spend a certain amount of money to basically get something from the devs, and then you are able to sell that thing in the game. It could be extremely bad for the game, or it could just be something that doesn't really matter in the game. But until we see it fully in the works, it's really hard to determine how it is going to play out in the player's market. We'll say that this is really something that people consider to be pay to win, and the devs should really look at that and decide if they still want to add it in or not. Because a lot of people will look at the game and even if there's a tiny bit of pay to win in the game, they will just not play the game whatsoever, even if it is something that will never affect them in the game. From what we know so far, the game has been working the exact way that they have promised, and in PAX Day, the player is going to be able to claim a zone and build whatever they like in it. In fact, the building is so in-depth, we've already seen full mini kingdoms built by creators like Asmongold and his community. Merely a few, um, really a few weeks, we've created a gigantic city-state. Everything that you see here is owned by my guild. We got it. Damn. Damn. Spax Day? Yeah, it is. Render distance is insane. Well, like, also what's so crazy about the render distance is it's rendering other people's buildings. On top of being able to build your own structures, you'll also be able to explore the massive world, as it has a very similar philosophy to Elden Ring, where if you can see it, you could probably explore it. By exploring the world, not only will you be able to meet other players, but you'll be able to delve deep into dungeons, fight bosses, and even PvP to your heart's desire. I would say my favorite aspect of the game so far is the combat, as they've kept it very simple, and it feels very similar to a game like Conan Exile. Overall, as a MMO, this game is insanely unique, and has unmatched potential when it comes to sandbox MMOs in this year. Before we go any further, feel free to like and subscribe as it immensely helps the channel lets me know that you guys want to see more right now we're trying to hit a thousand subs and anything severely helps i appreciate you guys let's get back into it Soulframe is a fantasy MMO with very unique features being developed by Digital Extremes, or more specifically, Warframe devs. In this game, you'll be able to explore an area called Midrath Island while using a mixture of melee combat, magic, and music. The combat in the game is very similar to games like New World, while in combat, you'll be able to switch between weapons like swords, pole arms, and bows, while using unique skills at the same time. How these skills are chosen is based on the bionic arm that your character has on. So in Soulframe, uh, rather than changing your Warframe, you are going to just change every game needs a magic arm i assume so that's what we have here and you will be changing your pact which is with the omen beasts that are in the in the lands that you find yourself in and uh, we're probably going to do the o tempest for this one yes thank you and then lastly uh, a, a big important part of the game is awakening your connection to ancestors the ode which are the guy the gods from the sky have cast a spell song on the on the people of alka and taken away their memories and their culture and their history and it's up to us to remind them so we have to seek out our ancestors and they become in essence 
uh, the ways we customize our skills. In combat, you'll be able to play music sheets that will open secret paths and possible secret quests similar to Lost Ark as well. One issue I've seen with the game so far is they haven't shown off any MMO aspects, although it has been promoted as a MMO, making many people believe that this MMO is going to be very similar to Warframe and how that game is a MMO. My favorite thing about the game so far is how unique the arm system is, as it's something we've really never seen in a MMO ever before. Overall, the game is coming along very nicely and seems very polished. I believe once we start to see more of the MMO aspects, though, it is going to take over the top MMOs in the year. Transhuman is a post-apocalyptic MMO being developed by Starry Studios that takes place in a world being corrupted by an alien called Stardust. With this corruption taking over, the player has become a mutant human, allowing them to harness the power of Stardust and fight back. In the game, you'll explore a massive world that slowly gets harder over time, with up to 3,000 players per server. In these servers, you'll be able to build your own base that will allow you to craft and store excess items. You'll even be able to pick up your base and move it similar to a game like Fallout 76. The game is also a PvE and PvP game, making it where players can declare war on you and your guild and potentially raid your base depending on your server. As in PvE servers, most PvP is allocated into zones like the Division. In PvP servers, you can easily PvP wherever your heart desires. Outside of PvP, there are full quest lines, dungeons, and massive boss fights to do as well. One thing I enjoy about the game is the art style and the storytelling about the aliens. Although something that's really bad about the game is the loot box gotcha system they've implemented to get better weapons. I believe that one thing could honestly be the downfall of Once Human. Overall, the game is insanely fun, fast-paced, and has great storytelling with its unique environment. But we'll have to wait and see what they do about the potential pay to win from those loot boxes boxes. Learn Liberty is an action-packed type fantasy MMO being made by NCSoft that is already released in Korea and is soon to be released in the States. This MMO doesn't really have anything super unique, but watching it and playing it feels really refreshing as if I'm interacting with a older MMO. If you're a fan of static combat from games like Lineage 2, there's a high chance that you'll really enjoy the style as well. One thing I really enjoy in this game is the massive PvP battles that reminds me of ESO's world PvP. I also really appreciate how the combat is very flow-like, making it seem as if all your skills blend together. The biggest issue in the game currently is the slight pay to win. With this pay to win, you're able to buy items on the store and sell them on the market similar to black desert online you can't buy max out items as the market only goes up to a certain item tier and from what i've heard almost no one uses the pay to win systems as they're not really worth using at all overall the game is very fun gives a classic feel to the players and it has a very unique world building to keep you engaged i definitely recommend it for anybody looking for a new mmo going into 2024 and with that that is the top five mmos releasing in 2024 now there is other mmos that are releasing this year and other mmos that are going into alpha for example ashes of creation is going into alpha 2 this year medieval dynasty is getting re-released this year. Wayfinder is getting fully released this year as well. There's a lot more on top of this. But what do you think of these top five? Maybe you agree with them. Maybe you disagree with them. Maybe there's one that you're really looking forward to that I didn't mention. If that's the case, let me know in the comments below. Before we go, feel free to check out all the creators on the screen here. These are all the people that I use some of their clips throughout the video. Mainly, I tried to pull clips directly from the source of the devs, but sometimes it was kind of hard to do that. So I had to use some clips from some other creators. So go check out their channels. I will leave links in the description below. So that way, if you guys want to find them easier for Blue Protocol or Once Human or whatever it is, you should be able to find them very easy and get a more in-depth, more in-detail video on all of the games, especially if you're trying to get into the nitty gritty of each and every game. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you guys want to see next. And besides that, I will catch everybody next time. Peace!